this life has anything to gain at all I'll count a loss if I can hear you, feel you Cause I need you, can't walk this earth alone I recognize I'm not my own So before I fall, I need to hear you We are starting a new series called Pure in Life Pretty stoked about this series. We came back from Winter Retreat, had a great time from Winter Retreat. A lot of you made really good decisions. It was really cool to see how God has been working in you and through you over the last couple weeks, uh, to see some of the decisions that you guys have made to better your life, to be more Christ-like, has just been a tremendous thing. And I, and I love it, and you guys are awesome for it. So the month of February, what is, what's in the month of February? Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's. 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 I like to say Valentine's. It's Valentine's. What is it? What is that? Like what? What is that day? It's an excuse for women to get candy. So it's an excuse for women to get candy. I don't know about that. Uh, what is it? You want to hear what it actually is? Well, no. Before we say what it actually is. What are some thoughts on you guys? What What is Valentine's Day? It's what? Holiday. National Single Awareness Day. National Single Awareness Day. Okay. All right. Your parents' anniversary. Your parents' anniversary. Very cool. That's so cute. Aww. I did. No. What's up? A day where a lot of people's hearts get broken. It can happen. Sounds like he's talking from experience. Poor guy. Poor guy. You have a lady one day to give pretty gifts to. Anyways, Valentine's Day. So I said, hey, this would be a great idea. Let's talk about pure purity in life. Let's talk about having a pure life. So this week we're talking about pure in heart. Next week we'll be pure in mind. The week after that we'll be pure in life. Uh, we'll be kind of talking about how important it is for you as a Christ follower to be an example to the world. Uh, remember we talked a couple weeks back about being an ambassador? Well, Pure in Life is going to talk about that. See, tonight we're going to hit on Pure in Heart because in your heart is where your passions grow. In your heart is where your desires grow. What your heart is consumed with is pretty much who you are. So whatever comes out of your life is what's in your heart. You, you really can't fake that. It's something that is a part of you and it's something that's gonna come out of you. You know, I love it a lot of times, students come into the youth room and they try to put on a really good show, like everything's good or life is okay. But see, that's not true because by the way you live your life, by your actions, by what pours out of your heart, I can tell that there's something wrong. I can see that there's something going on, okay? It's, it's, it's very apparent. To you, it's not. It's, for me, it's not. You know, Melanie be like, what's going on? What, what's wrong? I can tell you're bothered by something. No, I'm fine. I'm good. Other people can tell what's going on in your heart. They, they can see it just by what's pouring out of you. So tonight, we're going to really focus on pure of heart. Because the heart is where, like I said, the passion grows. It's where the choices that you make for life come from. The people you love. How you love them. The way you love them. How much you care for somebody, how much you care for things. That all comes from the heart. Uh, not, maybe not literally like the muscle that pounds, <laughs> okay? But it comes from somewhere in here. You know, how many of you have ever had a broken heart? Like seriously, and you can raise your hand if you're young, yeah. You know what it feels like to have that, just that ripping vice grip feeling. You understand what that is. Well, tonight we're going to talk a lot about purity in that. We're going to talk about what does a pure heart look like? Why do we need to have a pure heart? Are you going to really pop up the What's the important what? Are you going to pop up the picture just what the pure heart looks like? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we're going to see through this what the pure heart looks like. <laughs> that would be kind of gross. I'm just saying. Find a heart. No, no, I'm just kidding, though. Find a heart. All right. Well, sure. the don't show the what? The Hunger Games? Oh, no, we're not going to do that. So, pure of hearts. Listen, guys, I understand we can't be perfect. I get that. I, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Okay, if you think you're perfect, well, we need to first solve the first step there, and that's coming to the awareness that you're not. Okay, it's number one step in all of it. No, we can't be perfect. I get that. So we have to understand that we're striving for something that honestly we're never going to reach. Okay, not at least in this world. And for some people, that's really difficult to understand because in our society, we have to be we're very goal-oriented. 
We're very focused on reaching something, being successful at it, then reaching the next level and being successful at it. But when it comes to a life chasing after Christ, when it comes to living with a pure heart, that's something that's very difficult. And the only way it's going to happen is when we see Jesus. <coughs> but that's it. And this earth and where we are here, we're never going to be perfect. Okay? So I get that. When we talk about the pure heart, it's about us striving to be more like Christ. It's about us striving to be the example that he was on earth. So pure heart. What does it look like? Why do we need to have it? What, what is so important about having this, this pure heart? If you have your Bibles, open up to Psalms 51. We're going to verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. We're going to park on this for a moment and, and talk about this because there is some understanding around this scripture. If you were to go back up to the beginning of 51 and, and kind of read through it, you would see some well, you would see somebody who's really heartbroken. You would see somebody who has gone through some tragedy or disaster. You would see somebody who truly has made the wrong choice and they know that they've made the wrong choice. And they feel and they see and they understand that they've made the wrong choice. And they are now coming to the understanding that they need Christ to clean them, that they need God to, to, to clean them, to give them a pure heart. This person we're talking about is David. David has made a decision by this point where we are now. He has made a decision that has completely thrown his world upside down. I mean, totally has just rocked him. Okay? This guy is hurting. David was considered a man that was after God's own heart. This guy was crazy. He loved God. He, he worshipped God. Many of us, he, he, he sat in a room like this and worshipped with people. They worshipped God. He was a person who, who feared God and chased God and loved God and wanted to be like God. This is, this is the guy we're talking about here. This guy who, in a couple verses before, just sounds so broken and just sounds just a wreck. I heard that too. That was funny. <laughs> Amen, sister. No. <laughs> this guy is a wreck. And listen to me. He made a serious decision. A decision that made a pure heart extremely impure. So this guy had a moment. A moment like many of us can have and do have. Not necessarily this specific situation, but many situ situations like this. Here's a guy who is just taking a stroll on the top of his palace. He's the king. And he's looking out amongst his palace. And he catches something. Something catches his eye. And it's something that's not appropriate. It's something that's not right. But it catches his eye. And you know what? He has a choice at that very moment to make a decision whether to follow that choice or to run from that choice. And that's an example for many of us in this room, guys, because there are situations that we'll run into in our life where there is a choice, a clear, drawn-out choice. Do I choose to do this or do I choose not to do this? And see, all of that choice, that all resonates in our heart. That choice comes from the heart. What's in your heart is what's going to decide what that choice is. And again, I will say, this man, David, was a guy considered many years later a guy chasing after God's own heart. And he made a choice. He saw something that he really, really wanted. And at that point, he had a choice, whether to choose to take it or to choose to run from it. And we see where David's impure heart took over. And where his selfish, sinful desire took over. And he chose to take something, one that wasn't his, and then he murdered somebody because of it. Listen, he had a choice to make here. And he chose to take the sinful path. And because he did that, we now land where we are here in 51, where this is a guy who is just broken. Who is just and just, I can't imagine. He 
he, he, he loved God. God gave him the position he was in. God blessed him. God took care of him. He chose. He chose a direction that totally blew that out of the water. Because of a choice that he made. He, he went from a pure to an impure heart. So why are we talking about this? It's very simple. Because many of us have made choices in our lives. Maybe not that extreme. But we've made choices that have separated us from God. We've made decisions or have gone down the path that we shouldn't have gone down. So we come to this tonight, pure in heart, because we should be just like David, screaming and crying out, creating me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew the loyal spirit within me. You go up to verse 7, he says, Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. He understood where he was in his life. He understood that he was sinful and broken. And he's crying out to God, Fix me, God. Only you can fix me. Making me a new heart. Cleanse me. Wash me. God, I need you. This is what he's crying out. God, I need you. And it's a beautiful song. If you got to take time, I would encourage you to write it down, highlight it, circle it, read through the whole chapter. It's not very long. It's some 19 verses. Look at the agony this, poor, this, this guy went through. I say poor guy, not poor. He made a decision. <laughs> Look at the pain and the agony he went through. And we see this. So why should we be crying out to God? One, because we need clean, clean hearts. We need pure hearts. The choices you make, the life that you live, all stems from the decisions and the, and the functioning of your heart. And it's where you are in your heart. You know, a lot of students come up and say, you know what, JP, I, re I really need to clean up my act. You know, there's some, there's some choices that I make that I shouldn't make. One thing is cussing. Man, I, I want to stop cussing. And I really need to stop cussing. But I, I try so much. I, I pray and I ask God to change me. That's good. That's good. I, I read his scripture. I'm trying to focus on what he asked for me. That, that's real good. That's real good. I really want to change. I don't want to cuss anymore. I want to stop using foul language. I know it's something I shouldn't be doing. I want to stop that. My question then would be, what, what's in your heart? What do you mean, what's in my heart? I'm praying, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking God, I'm trying my best to, to follow after Him. Okay, that's good, that's important. But I got a question for you. What are you putting into your heart? What are you putting into your heart? See, we, we try so much to fix just our heart, when essentially we need to look at what we're putting into our heart. Let me give you a, a good example. If you listen to music that is laden with, with foul language, how do you think you're going to speak? Probably. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that's going to happen, Rick? Because it's, you're being influenced by it. You're being influenced by it. And persuaded. Persuaded by it, influenced by it. But are they forcing it to you, or do you have a choice to make on it? Do <coughs> you have a choice to make on it? See, I struggled with that for a long time. With cussing, it was very difficult for me. And then one day it was like, you know what? If I stop listening to this junk, this might help. You know what? It got a whole lot easier when I started realizing that, you know what? If I remove the influences that are influencing my heart, if I remove those out of the way, if I get rid of those, if I throw those out, those influences are no longer going to influence my heart. And they're going to cause me to have these desires that are not appropriate, that are not right, that are not pure. It's important for us to have a pure heart. It's important for us to look at the impurities that we're putting into our lives. What can we take out of our life that's causing us heartache? What are some things that we can remove from our life and take from us so that way we're, we're, not, we're not being affected by it? David, he had a choice. He had a decision to make. He chose to chase after that. And because of that, a whole string of events happened. And he just fell farther and farther and farther away from God. So why do we need to cry out to God? Because we need to have cleansed hearts. Because we need to come to the understanding and the realization that I need God. 
And that the one way that I'm going to have a good relationship with him is by allowing him to come into me and remove that sin away from me. And then also to proactively work on removing those things, those bad influences around me. We had a great series on friends one time. Remember when I used to tell you about that? Uh, who you put around you is who you're going to become, right? So, you know, a bunch of boxers you put around you, like fighters, what are you going to eventually become? Boxer. Yeah, your interests are going to be focused on that. Your interests are going to be one of that. If you're maybe a driver, you like to drive, what are you going to put yourself around? A bunch of drivers, maybe race car drivers, NASCAR drivers, you like just spin in circles or, uh, you know, <laughs> off-road drivers or monster truck drivers, you know what I mean? So what you put in around you and you focus around you is what you're going to become. Well, it's the same thing with your hearts. See, we can change our hearts. We can guide our hearts by what we put into our hearts. And essentially, you can become something you don't want to by allowing everything to just influence you instead of making conscious decisions. And we'll talk more about the conscious decisions when we talk about mine next week. Making those conscious decisions <clears throat> to put that stuff into your life. You have that. So why do we need to have a clean heart? God has called us to do that. What does a pure heart look like? That's my question to you. What do you think a pure heart looks like? I don't need the Sunday school answer. <laughs> Jesus. That's right. All right, we're done. Let's get out of here. <laughs> what does a pure heart look like? Go start, Ricky. A pure heart looks like well, someone that doesn't use foul language. Okay. Um, someone who's like mainly doing what they're supposed to, like not cursing or not listening to foul music or doing anything bad. Those are all good things. Those are all good things for sure, Israel. A pure heart looks like a person who has faith and hope. Faith and hope. I like that. Anybody else? How about some older students? What's a pure heart look like? Someone who doesn't desire sins. Someone who doesn't desire sins. Wow. That was deep. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve. Uh, deep in the heart. Although, you know, you're supposed to follow along those lines, like you're not supposed to swear, you're not supposed to, you know, do all those simple tendencies. I think that as long as you're absolutely trying and putting your faith in God, you're going to stop that. Mm and you're following his path and you've accepted him as your savior, I think you do have a pure heart. So even if you still you know, do it, you're trying to get over it. Well, you, you definitely hit it really hard in the head in the beginning. You're going to reap what you sow. So if you are taking time out studying God's word, you're taking time out praying, you're taking time out to spend time with, with I say godly people, I use that word very loosely, um, with people who are better influenced, more positive influence than ungodly people. Yeah, you're going to see repercussions happen there. You're going to see change happen in your life. So I wrote a couple things down. What does a pure heart look like? It looks like a person giving themselves over to God. It looks like a person saying, you know what, God, I know what you've called me to do. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to, I'm going to put you in control. It looks like a person coming to terms with the fact they are broken and that they need God. This is a very difficult thing for a male because we tend to be like puffed up all the time. You know, right at the very edge of the pop. We're really close to it, but we don't. Some guys do, but you know what happens. Um, we struggle with this sometimes. We really do because we have to come to the terms and understand that I'm not in control. Okay? I can't control everything. And come to the realization that, you know what, I need to let God guide and I need to let God guide my life, my relationship, my wife and I's relationship, our marriage for you guys. It's, it's your life. It's the decisions and the path that you choose. When you come to terms with the understanding that you need God, that's what a pure heart looks like. That's what coming to a pure heart looks like. It looks like one giving over their life to be changed by God. Because you literally have to give that to God. You have to say, all right, God, I'm willing to give my life to you for you to do what you want with it. Because a lot of us, we can sometimes still have that, you know, chain holding us down to the ground so that we don't float away. You know, we're afraid to give it all the way over to them. We still want to have some type of grasp on the world. But see, we need to, we need to let that go. We need to let that go. We need to allow God to just, man, take over. Give us pure heart. All right, let's keep moving on. What's in our heart describes who we are. We hit on this a little bit. I'm not talking about your passion here, okay? Many of you all have passions, 
Some of them are, are crazy passions. That's good. Uh, some of them are like, man, I just got a passion to sit on my couch. <laughs> just chill out. You know? That's, that's an okay one. You might not live long, but it's, it's okay, health-wise. You're doing all right. <laughs> hey, you finally got a job, man. I mean, that's good. I'm talking about your character. I'm talking about your character. Listen, I said a little bit ago when students come in, they're struggling, and they put on a fake smile. Eventually, that fake smile just fades away, and you can just see right through it. What's in your heart is, is who you are. What's in your heart is what's going to come out of you. The struggles that you're struggling with inside your heart, they're going to come out. Sin doesn't just affect one person. It affects the people around you. The struggles that you have in your life don't just affect you. They affect everybody around you. So when we talk specifically about the, how the heart describes who you are, we're not talking about just passions. Which passions are very important. I have a passion to preach to students. That's a, that's a God-given thing. That's a blessing. But what I'm talking about is character. Your heart defines the character and who you are and who you're going to become. And it's important to have a pure heart or be chasing after a pure heart. A heart that mimics and is mirroring Christ. That's extremely important. If you have your Bibles, Matthew 15, 18, you don't have to turn around, I'm just going to read it. The words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. The words you speak come from your heart. How many of you... Nah, we'll leave that. We'll get to that when we get to that term. When we get to that purity. Get to that when we get to that purity. What's in your heart defiles you? Your actions come from your heart. They show the world who you truly are. They show the world who you truly are. You can try your best to fake it to make it. But it's not going to happen. Because reality is going to come forward. Reality is going to come out. Titus 1.16 says, Such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Make sure that some of you in this room are not that way. Let me read it again to you. Such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. Do, do you see that there? As a person who's saying, I know who God is. I know what Jesus has done for me. I know who he is. He died on the cross for me. I get that. But then the way that you're living your life is showing the complete opposite of that. That's where having that pure heart, it, it, it gets away from that. Because when we allow that to be the part of our life, we allow that to consume our life where we're living a double life, where we're saying I know God, but we're living like we don't, that's all that's doing is confusing you and it's confusing the people around you. Consider that uh, hypocrite. Hypocrite, yeah. Listen, these people, they, 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 they knew who God, wa who God was. They called themselves Christians. My question to you tonight is, are you living two-faced? Is your heart one way? but your outside expressions are different. Where's your life at? Where, where are you at right now with that? Is your heart pure? Is your heart impure? Are you like David, secretly inside, broken, crying out for God, begging for him to fix you, begging for him to come to you? Is that where you are right now in life? You know that you should be living a certain way. You know that you should be Trusting in him, finding him for his guidance, listening to him when he speaks to you? Or, or are you like David, who's just, man, you are just broken. You could sing, you could sing this psalm, you could read this psalm over and over again and it has so much power for you. Is that where you're at? Is that, is that you? We're going to wrap this up with some verses that Jesus challenges us with and and I want to encourage you guys, um, if you've got your Bibles, hopefully you have a pen, you know, mark some of these down. If not, I'll put, post them up later and you guys can go back to them and look at them because they're extremely important to understand. So some things we need to see uh, about how to become pure in heart. First one is we need to understand God knows your heart. <clears throat>
God knows you. The Bible tells us that God knew you before he put you in your mother's womb. Okay, he knows you. You can't hide your life from him. You can't hide your desires, your sins, your impurity. You can't hide that from him. He knows you. He knows what you're struggling with. He knows what you're going through. He sees that. Psalms 44, 21 said, God would surely have known it, for he knows the secrets of every heart. Listen to God. Your life is an open book. He can read every page. He knows the front. He knows the back. He knows it all. The pursuit of, of looking at becoming pure in heart and mimicking Christ is to come to the understanding and know that God knows your heart. He knows you. You can't hide from him. You can't hide anything from him. He knows you. 1 Corinthians 28, 9 says, For the Lord says every heart, for the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. <laughs> Listen, we worship a God who knows you. You might be able to hide it from us, but you can't hide it from him. He knows what's going on in life. He knows what's going on in your heart. Secondly, ask God to give you a new heart. Receive by faith the cleansing only God can bring to your heart. No one else can repair your heart, but God can. No one else can repair the brokenness in your heart, except for God. Realize that God knows you, and then give your heart to him. Give your heart over to him. Thirdly, accept the trials and hardships as God cleanses you with fire. Every sin, every sinful choice, there is a repercussion for it. it. It might not happen immediately. I mean, I think we would be able to live a lot better off as if you sin, you just got like smacked in the face. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of us would really make different choices. You know, I know there's a thing going around, especially when I was a teenager, it might be something now, where you put the rubber bands on your wrist. You know what I mean? And, and, and you would snap yourself. That was a big thing when I was growing up in youth group. Okay? It was like, it was a way to control whatever you wanted to control. It was like, oh, I did something wrong. Snap. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. It helps. It helps. I don't know. Maybe that's why I don't feel pain anymore. I'm just so used to it. You know? No. Listen, you can snap all you want, but you're not fixing the root of the problem. You're, you're abusing yourself. That's what you're doing. Okay? It's just rubber band emo, you know? You're not fixing anything, okay? You, you're not fixing the root of the problem. Ask God to come in. Ask God to fix you. Ask God to cleanse you. Be like David, cry out. God, give me a new, just give me a new heart. God, I need you. Snapping yourself in the wrist is not going to fix it. It's not going to happen that way. Four, live your life with a pure heart. Take the necessary actions so you live a holy life just like Jesus. We have a choice. David had a choice. He had a choice. The choice has been given to us. Every time an instant comes up for you to stumble... You have a choice. It's a split second choice. You don't have much time, but you have a choice. And the choices that you make is gonna resonate with what's in your heart. It's gonna show what's in your heart. Becoming proactive. Become proactive at choosing godly things. Become proactive at making godly decisions. Second Timothy 2.22 says, uh, run from anything that simulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithful, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call the Lord with pure hearts. Listen, if you're struggling, ask God for help. If you're struggling with, with chasing after him and being more Christ-like, ask God for help. He'll, he'll help you. He cares. He loves. He wants you to be successful at that. He wants you to chase after him. He wants you to be more like his son. And lastly, keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Over and over again, I say that to you. Over and over again, we teach that. Keep your eyes focused on Christ. A pure heart is, is, is so important. Your heart is your character. What you have resonating in your heart, what you're feeding your heart is who you're going to become. Take some time to really look at what you're feeding yourself. What are your influences? What's your influences? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What's, what is influencing you? What are you going to become? Because whatever you hear and you see and you read is going to affect your character. It's going to affect who you become. Not that you should be blind to the world and just you know, close it all off. <laughs> But be careful. Be careful. Some of us struggle with certain things that we shouldn't, we just shouldn't. Rap. I cannot listen to rap. I can't. Now, Christian rap, I can get away with some. But some people, I, I have some brothers who, you know, like Christian brothers who just, man, they love to listen to rap and they can listen to it. It doesn't affect them. They shouldn't. I don't think they should, but it doesn't affect them. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. It, it affects me. It affects me. It changes me. Music's powerful. Now, I'm not just talking about music. For some of you, it could be other things. There could be things in your life that you know that, you know what, I need to be proactive and I need to remove that. And I need to take that away from me because it's affecting me. Is it causing you to be pure or impure in your heart? What, what is it causing you to be? Last verse, and we're going to wrap this up and pray. It says, 1 John 3, 2 and 3 says, Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have, who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Where are you at with your life? Would you say that you are, do you, do you have an impure heart or a pure heart? Are you striving for that purity like Jesus Christ? Listen, Jesus is the only man who walked the earth and never sinned. And that, and that had to happen. Because if he sinned, he would have never been able to be the perfect sacrifice for us. It would have never happened. He wouldn't have been able to do it. We're to mimic him. We're to mimic him. Or to mimic who he is. We might not reach it until like what it just said here in 2 John, until we see him for who he really is, until we see him in our glory, in his glory, I mean. Until we see that, we're just striving for it. We're striving to be like it. And I encourage you guys. It, it may be tough, but it's totally worth it. Check your life. Where are you at? We need to turn and run to God and have a pure heart. And we need to live a pure life that looks just like Jesus. I love using the mirror example. We are to mirror Christ. When people are to see us, and we'll talk a lot about this in our life, in the pure life. When people are to see us, they're to see Jesus, the best representation of Jesus. If somebody is to look at you and compare you to Jesus, would they be able to even see a resemblance of who he is in your life? Would they be able to see that? And you know what? That change, that resemblance, it starts with your heart. It starts with your heart. Let's pray. God, we love you. Father, I thank you so much for blessing these great, great teens for being here and listening to me speak, God. God, I do pray that you'll just, you'll challenge their hearts. That you'll challenge them, Father. I pray, God, that you will encourage them as many of them are struggling with life, struggling with decisions, struggling with the influences that they're putting into their hearts. I pray that you'll challenge them. I pray the Holy Spirit will challenge them on those influences. That, God, that they will realize that they need you. They'll realize those influences are bad. And, Father, I pray that their life will be in such a way, that they'll live their life in such a way that when somebody compares them to your son, they will be able to say, man, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. God, if, they, if that person wasn't able to say that about them, I pray that you'll challenge them on that, that they'll truly make that decision, Father. God bless us now. Take care of us. Keep us safe.
Father, we just love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen.